It's in I started recording already. Ah, okay, perfect. Thank you, Laura. You're the best. All right, so let's get started. We'll go ahead to the next slide. All right, so for Geeks Academy, who are we? We are a coding boot camp. We are HQ'd in Miami, but we have over 10 locations in seven different countries. We have graduated over 4,500 students. 85% of those students are landing jobs within the first 90 days on average after graduation. We have partnerships already established with major industry players, and we have been rated by various platforms as one of the top coding boot camps in the world. This year, earlier this year, we were mentioned two times in Forbes, which was like a really big achievement for us. We were one of the top five full stack boot camps of 2024 and also one of the top five data science boot camps of 2024. So as you guys know, Forbes is like, you know, a legit source. And that was a big achievement for us. We were really happy about that. And then other platforms that have rated us really highly are the Premios Excelencia Educativa. That is like a Spain kind of I don't want to say similar to Forbes because nothing similar to Forbes, right? But it's it's like a a, a big name thing that over there in Spain, and and they've named us a few times as one of the best coding boot camps. Also, Switch Up, one of the third thirty top worldwide boot camps. We average four point nine stars across all platforms, and we are licensed by the U.S. Department of Education. So, what are our goal here at Four Geeks or our mission is, is to reduce what we call the underemployment rate and the unemployment rate. But most of our student body is what we call underemployed. So they're working jobs that are not realizing their full potential. Maybe they're driving Uber or they're doing DoorDash or they're working retail jobs or healthcare positions where they're working long hours, late nights and not getting the pay that they want. What we do, we teach you how to code, we teach you how to build apps, we teach you um, how to become a software developer. And then within 90 days, we, with our career support team, which I'm gonna talk about soon, place you in jobs, see on average a 22% salary increase and better hours, better benefits, and better work-life balance than you had before joining the program. And as I said before, 80, 85, 86% of our students are landing that job within an average of 90 days. So the two main platforms that we have at 4Geeks that help you to achieve this are GeekPal and GeekForce. So what are they? GeekPal is our mentorships. You're never alone here at 4Geeks. You have unlimited access to one-on-one -on -one mentorships, group mentoring sessions that happen three times a week, and uh, a Slack community. Our Slack community right now has uh, close to 5,000 people, I think. So there's a bunch of developers, helping developers, who can help you with questions that you have late at night, who can support you through your journey and who can just be connections for you as you navigate this new stage of your career and your life. And then we have Geek Forest, which is our career support track. So just like you have unlimited coding mentorship, you also have unlimited career support mentorship. So we help you with your LinkedIn, your GitHub, your, uh, your resume, of course, everything you need to be ready to apply for jobs, to follow up with those jobs, and then to eventually land your first job in tech. You can see here just four examples of students who have recently graduated um, who have landed jobs through Geek Force. This is like, like I guess the saying is like a drop in the ocean, right? Like this is such a small preview of you know what's happening every week. I think we we tried to do a statistic of how many students on average are landing jobs per week, and it was like an average of between six and seven. It came to like 6.4, 6.5 students per week that land jobs after completing the program. And the students who do land jobs the fastest and the better jobs are the ones that are committed, are the ones that are going through the Geek First process. Well, we're first committed during the program, completed their project, great attendance, had a killer final project, Geek Talk was on point. Then they went into Geek Force. Then they, you know, they showed up to all their appointments. They had their resume ready. They're going to networking events. They're meeting people. And those are the students who land jobs quicker and with better, better benefits. I guess we'll go to the next slide. Okay, <laughs> 400 plus companies that hire our students. You have your bigger name companies here at the top. You have like Ultimate Software, Twilio, Facebook, National Geographic, Uber, eBay, Microsoft. Those are like the eye catchers, right? But here in Miami, we're a huge startup scene. So even the mid to small size companies that you see below them, 
the there's pros and cons of working at big companies and small companies. So yes, if you work at a big company, you get to say like, I work at Microsoft and that's awesome, of course. But even when you work at smaller size companies, you have so much more say in the product. You get to very often know the CEO. You get to put your opinion into what's happening with, with the product and really grow the company. So Miami, there's startups everywhere. They have events for uh, venture capitalists to invest in startups, very similar to like the TV show Shark Tank, if you've ever seen that TV show. So just like you guys are presenting your final project tonight, people here in Miami have these ideas, they build an app, they build a product or a service, and they really bring it to market. So a lot of our grads do work in smaller companies like this, and it's really cool. So you can't really say if working at a big or a small company is better. There's both and our grads do work at both. Um, these are just some partners that help make what we do possible. We have educational partners like Miami Dade College. We also have some here community partners, financing partners, just people who help help us to do what we do. So we give them a shout out here with their logos. We have one speaker here tonight who is Amanda. She is a career expert at Talent Inc. So in just a moment, I'll be passing it over to her. But the very last part of my presentation here is our roster of projects. Go to the next slide. So we have four projects presenting tonight. We have Yummy Vegan Food with Julie, Admasu, Jay, and Legend. We have Pimp My Ride with Maria and Michael. We have Ninja Station with Leo. And we have Timmy Howe with Carlos, David, and Elaine. So actually that concludes my presentation so i'm going to pass it over to amanda our career expert here and she's going to share her insights with you guys and after she's done we will do a q a so you guys can ask her any questions that you would like to ciao All right, can everyone see that? Yay, thank you for the thumbs up. I appreciate it, Jay. We see you and hear you well. Excellent, thank you. Oh, I love all the, oh. Do you know how many times I do these and nobody uses the emoji to put the thumbs up? Thank you all, that makes me feel so happy. All right, without further ado, as uh, Alyssa mentioned, my name's Amanda Augustine. I'm a certified professional career coach and resume writer. I have been geeking out on the job search scene for nearly 20 years at this point. Um, and I'm currently based out of New York. I represent Talent Inc's family of brands. So we have a ton of them, including Career.io, which is our newest and greatest, um, which is really this platform that combines both human powered services as well as AI powered tools to basically help individuals with every stage of their, not just their job search, but their career journey. And that's really the goal of the organization and particularly of this tool is that we want to be the lifelong companion, whether you're looking for a new job, you want to excel in your current role or you want to make a change. So such a good fit with with uh, for geeks, I have to say. Um, I love this. If, if you've not seen this before, this is how I break up the job search process and then I throw thrive at the end as your work management or your professional uh, development section, because I think it's a really nice digestible way to break down the job search process so it doesn't feel so overwhelming because let's be honest looking for a job kind of sucks no one ever says i love looking for work um i always also say that when you become a job seeker you automatically become a marketer and for anybody who has any type of background or sales or marketing or knows someone who does this prep search close phase would actually look very familiar to a marketing or sales funnel you're identifying your target audience, which is the type of role you want and the type of company you want to work for. You're building all your marketing materials to support that goal by selling your most relevant selling points, your qualifications and your cultural fit to that organization. You are pursuing leads through applications, your network, and 4Geeks has an amazing network, so definitely utilize it, as well as recruiters, and then you're closing the deal. 
And I always say that onboarding, which is the first 90 days of any new job, is an extension of that interview process because you're still feeling them out. They're still feeling you out. You want to make sure it's the right match. So you're kind of still in interview phase during those first 90 days of a new job. And that's just a nice way to think about the job search. Um, just a little bit more about Query.io is basically we are trying to arm you with the information, tools, and services that you need to make really smart decisions about your career. Seems like you already made a really smart decision about your career because you're here tonight and you're and you're a part of Four Geeks. Um, what I wanted to do was go over a few. I call them job market trends, but it really is half marketplace, half um, job search, half resume. Um, just some things to keep in mind. Now. The job search, the resume, there are some points that tend to remain somewhat similar in terms of their goals, but how we approach them and handle them as technology advances and, and things change in the market, they also adapt. So I tried to pick a few things that I thought were really key for this year. I've also written a few articles um, on this type of stuff for Fast Company. So at the very end of this presentation, I have QR codes to those links. So if you want the details and the backlinks that give you the data and all that kind of fun stuff, you can access it there. So I'm going to quickly go through, because um, I know you have a lot to do tonight, and I do not want to keep you up too late um, on a Friday. I want to go through some of these trends with you, just so you can keep them in mind. Um, the first being uh, adapting with upskilling. And the stat I read is that the average half-life of skills, so the halfway point before a skill becomes no longer effective, is less than five years for most industries. And in some tech fields, it's actually as low as two and a half years. So you know it's constantly changing, and you're constantly needing to stay on top of your skills in order to remain relevant um, and an attractive candidate. Obviously, I'm going to put it out there and assume y'all are right up there because you're, you're learning new skills right now and you're in the midst of all the AI technology and data science that's going on as well. So, But this is something to keep in mind and something I'd like to emphasize that as you graduate from this program and move on with your careers, that you always want to continue learning because while this is a great step, there's always new things to learn. You know how fast technology is changing. So when you are with an employer, no matter what size that company is, look for those opportunities, whether it's mentorship, professional develop, de development opportunities, whether they offer courses or credits or certain stipends towards continued education, they're going to send you to a conference. Take advantage of them as much as you can, because you can not only channel that all back into the job you're doing today, or at that time, but it's also going to be really great resume fodder for moving forward. So something to keep in mind there. Um, also, thumbs up. I, I, if I haven't mentioned, I am in New York City. I talk very quickly, and according to my mother, I do not enunciate. So let me know if you need me to slow down. I'm just trying to be really cognizant of time, but let me know if I'm talking too quickly because um, I get I, I'm well aware, and I've only had one coffee today, guys. I just promise. <laughs> All right. Um, the second is emphasis on soft skills. I think this is really interesting, particularly even in the tech field, we're seeing this, that um, companies seem more willing to upskill and reskill their uh, employees, which is great news. It means it's going to help you keep up with your skills once you join an organization. But they're prioritizing candidates who present with the right combination of soft skills to also complement their teams. Because it's a whole lot easier to teach someone how to use a new platform or program. It's a lot harder to teach them to be empathetic or to be a better collaborator. So that's something to keep in mind is that when you're thinking of, of course, they're all gonna freak out right now. Did I mention I have three golden retrievers? Um, <laughs> uh, think about what soft skills do you have that tend to be a strength for you. The ones listed on this slide were actually from a survey we did about a year ago when we asked employers and hiring professionals which soft skills have taken on greater importance in the last five years. And this was the list of them. It makes sense given what we've all gone through in the last five plus years, but uh, it, this has continued and has only grown in importance um, because people want strong team players who can collaborate, who have conflict resolution skills, all that fun. 
Um, so yes, you can list those among your skills in your resume or weave them into the professional summary at the top of your resume. But I also want you to think about when you were working on your projects for this boot camp, when you've worked other jobs, where have you leveraged these skills to add value to an organization, whether it was to handle an angry customer, to help resolve a bad issue, um, anything like that. If you can provide an example that offers proof of those skills, all the better. We talk about this all the time. When it comes to your resume, the key is show, don't tell. Sure, you can say you're a great coder, but then prove it to me somewhere else on your resume. Whatever you're gonna state you, you possess, great, but now I want proof of it in some way, shape or form, whether it's a case study, whether it's a statistic, um, something you can weave into that resume. So keep that in mind, because that goes with soft skills as well, well as all of your hard tech skills. I kind of laughed putting this in here because I knew this group's gonna be like, yeah, no kidding, Amanda. We're quite aware of AI at this point. Yeah, it's it, it's impacted practically every part of our lives at this point. Uh, the job search and the recruitment world are, are no different. Um, we're seeing recruiters and hiring professionals leveraging this technology, and we're also seeing job seekers use it. So I'm focusing a little bit more on the job seeker side. A couple things I want to keep in mind. Gen, Gen, Gen AI, ChatGPT, those sorts of things. Um, while they're great for helping you get a starting off point on a resume and things of that nature, I also like to point out the prompts you can write to help you with very different parts of your job search. Because I think a lot of people are trying to use it to tweak their, their resumes and cover letters and that sort of thing. But I actually like it for these types of things because it's really helpful in helping you gather your thoughts or brainstorm. Just you remember, keep in mind, it's only collected data up to a certain point. It's so important um, to make sure that you add the add on that says, you know, if you don't know this answer, say you don't know. Or if you don't have this data, say you don't have it um, so that you know if that information is accurate. Um, you know, we never take um, the output of a chat GPT response at face value. You're always going to look a little deeper, but it can be really helpful. I'll go back just in case anybody wanted to look at the prompts one more time. But I did a whole presentation on this um, for Fast Company last September at their Innovation Festival where we went deep on prompts. Um, and these were some of my favorites that I wanted to share with you. And they're just examples. Um, of course, I'm, I'm always going to recommend that, yes, Gen AI is great, but look for the companies that are leveraging that technology and already have some expertise in the job search area. So obviously, Career.io Shocker is one of those where we're using a lot of AI-powered tools, but there's also TLHQ. Uh, there's Jobscan.co. Those are the two that pop into my mind for various for various reasons that that I think are you know that I would I, I consider to be you know solid companies as well. But I would always say if you're looking to use this type of technology specifically for your job search, look for the companies that already had an excellence in that area or an expertise, and then started adding jet um, adding AI and data science into their products, because then you know that they're also hitting um, best practices. The one thing I will say is when I was playing with chat GPT to help like generate resume fodder and things of that, it did not always follow resume best practices. And so you have to be a little careful. Again, that's why we never take anything at face value when it comes to the output. And again, preaching to the choir, I'm sure, but these were always the takeaways that, that I provide to anyone when I'm talking about how you leverage this type of technology specifically for the job search process. Um, look for the redundancies in the job application materials. Remember, uh, bad output, uh, bad, the quality of output is always going to depend on the quality of the input. So the more detail you can provide, the better. Um, I think those are the big things to take away from here. I mentioned this earlier, but I think it's worth repeating um, that when you become a job seeker, I don't care if you're a salesperson, if you're a cab driver, or you're in retail, or you are coding ones and zeros all day, the moment you decide that you're on the hunt for a new opportunity, you instantly become a marketer. And it's important to remember that you are marketing the most valuable asset you will ever have, which is yourself, your skills, your value, your potential. So keep that in mind, that when you're marketing yourself, you want a consistent brand. 
Think of all the big brands we know out there, whether it's a print ad, it's something online, it's a commercial, you know what it is instantly because they have something recognizable about them. They have a look and feel um, that represents their brand. You want to take that same concept and apply it to your job search, to your professional reputation. If I look at your resume and I look at your LinkedIn profile and I meet you in person, um, am I going to feel catfished or does it feel like there's a consistent story being told? Um, that's something to keep in mind. How am I telling my story when it comes to my work history and um, my qualifications and my current job goal? And you want to make sure all those things are consistent because people are Googling your name when they receive your resume. Um, they are going to talk to your references. They're going to talk to the person who referred you. So keep that in mind. Uh, we did a study a few years ago where we were comparing um, DIY resumes, self-written resumes to professionally written resumes. And shocker, when we put them through all these different tests with all these different recruiters, the professionally written resumes came out on top. But we were trying to figure out why, what about them makes them so much more effective when it came to wooing a prospective employer. And we broke it down to these three key goals. So these are the three things you want to think about when you're looking at your resume and think about it. This also translates into your LinkedIn profile. You know, it's not just a narrative. Um, it's just not a timeline of everything you've done or could have done or will do. It's not just a transcript of your education. It's a story. Are you telling a compelling career narrative that explains how all these different experiences have led you to this type of job with this set of skills? So keep that in mind. When you look at your resume, um, when every piece of information you're looking at, think about how it compares to your goal. How is it supporting your goal? We're not creating blanks on your resume. We're not going to delete information, um, work experiences if they're not relevant, but we may trim down what we say about them or change how we present them to best support our goals. Um, striking the visual balance. I always say if content's king, then the design is queen. Uh, it's just as important. Um, how you present the information as the actual information that you present. So keep that in mind. You don't ever want something that feels like an eye chart. If your eyes start to blur in the slightest, it means it's not working. Um, so there is this concept of having a lot of white space, consistent uh, formatting throughout. Um, if you printed your resume, handed it to someone who knows nothing about you and gave it to them for 30 seconds and took it away and asked them, what kind of job am I targeting and why am I qualified for it? If they go, Ugh, it means you probably need to work on the format um, as well as the content of your resume. So keep that in mind. And demonstrating your value, we already talked about that, but the idea of offering proof of your qualifications, show, don't just tell. I will say this once, I will say it again, networking remains key. It's it's so important now. We know that it's um, definitely a very competitive job market right now. Um, you are 10 times more likely to land the job, not just the interview, but the job, if your application is accompanied by a referral. Um, so that means you need to work your network to make it work for you. Um, that means investing in it. And I don't mean monetarily, but actually investing time to nurture your connections. Um, I hear you have one-on-one -on -one mentors, you have groups, you have this great group of people that you work with now. Um, you have that Slack channel with so many active members who are graduates of this program. That is a gold mine. Thank you for geeks. That is a fantastic asset. Leverage the bejesus out of that. If you are not connected to all those individuals on LinkedIn yet, it's time to start cracking and reach out and remind them of how, how you're connected and why it makes sense for them to accept your connection. Because it is so much easier to land that job when you submit that app. Well, actually, before you submit the application, you talk to somebody and say, hey, I see that you work there. I, I saw an open position. I'm interested in applying. Tell me, what's the good, the bad, and the ugly of working there? Do you like it? How do you find it? What, you know, give me give me all the information. It's going to help you understand if it's the right opportunity for you, but it's also going to help you get information so that, you know, should I be emphasizing something more on my resume or cover letter because this company really cares about that? Or um, is there a certain skill that I might need to build up because my connection already told me that that's really important to them. So I need to show that I'm making um 
excuse me, making moves to fill that gap. Also, you're hoping that individual will say, well, give me your resume, I'll pass it along. You're still gonna apply through the system because most times they need you in their system, but you're also gonna bypass that system by having that individual say, hey, I know this person, They're, they graduated from the same program as me, it's a standout program, um, this person would be worth taking a look at. You are much more likely to get over that big hurdle. Um, so definitely something to keep in mind as much as all of these tools we talk about that are so amazing um, and all these things you can do, um, actual human connections are still a very, very important part of the job search process. And I would argue that they're becoming increasingly important as the technology increases and the more digital walls go up between you and the employer. Does that make sense? Okay. I slammed through that because um, <laughs> uh, I wanted to be cognizant of time, but I didn't want to take out any trends. I already took out two of them that were in here. I was like, this is too much. Um, I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, these QR codes, um, they're both for different articles that just go into greater detail on resume trends in 2024 and job search trends in 2024. So if you want more detail and background and or actual instruction or backlinks to further information, those will help you out. Um, I am on LinkedIn as well. You can find me. Uh, and I don't know, Alyssa, if I have time for Q&A. You tell me. <laughs> sure, for sure. You have time for Q&A. Um, okay. If anybody has any questions, feel free to just interject and ask, or you can also post them in the chat. But yes, we can open for Q&A with Amanda. Is it ever okay to have more than one page to your resume? Thank you, Christian. Heck yeah. In fact, uh, there was a study done, of course, I'm not going to remember who it was by, I think it was by Resume Builder, that found that employers preferred a two-page resume 2.3 times over a one-page resume at any level. So <laughs> what to take from that is that you don't have to have one page. Um, even if you're entry level, but you don't have to push it to two pages if you don't have enough information to warrant a second page. So 1000% you can have a two page resume. Um, we try and cap it at two pages unless, excuse me, unless you have an academic CV where you are entering the world of science or medicine or something along those lines, theirs can be super long. If you need a federal resume for a US federal position, those also tend to be much longer because they have to follow a very strict format that is longer. But the average resume for a professional worker is one to two pages and, we're, and employers tend to prefer two pages. And why? It's because with one page, maybe you can list your responsibilities, but there's not enough room to actually get into your selling points. So the way I think about a resume is that when you're getting into the employment history side of things, um, you have the title, your company name, the location, start and end dates. Then you have a small blurb that describes your overall responsibilities and duties and then you save the bullet points for your bragging points. And bragging points could mean, um, basically mean what proves you were good at what you did. So if you have a job where it's easily quantifiable, say sales, shocker, it's, oh, you know, beat quota by 10% consistently for the last four years. You know, that's an obvi obvious easy one. For tech, that can be a little more challenging, but what you wanna think about is quantification how many things have you done? Um, how large was the team you worked with? Did you bring a project um, uh, under budget or on time or ahead of schedule with um, you know minor amount of bugs or no bugs, things of the, the release date was blah, blah, blah. Can you tell I'm not a tech person? But think about it that way. So think about what proves that I did that project well. I actually recommend that everybody keep what's known as a brag book. It could be a Google Doc. It could be just a notepad app on your phone. It could be Evernote. It could be a freaking composition notebook. But somewhere where you're jotting down every time you take on more responsibility, you meet or beat a goal, you get some really great feedback from your manager or from a customer or a client, um, anything where if you're having a really bad day, you look back at this and go, 
I'm actually good at what I do. Um, but also, it's incredibly good fodder when you need to update your resume, um, when you need to negotiate for a raise or a promotion, or when you start looking for work. So it's a very long answer to a short question, but um, you want, I, I would recommend two pages as long as you have enough information to warrant it. This is not where we're going, you know, courier new double space to hit the, the you know, the word, the page count for, um, you know, uh, an English project that you had to do. Um, but if you have enough information, again, the last thing you want to do is shrink the font so much to try and make it fit on one page so that they can't read it. You know, if a recruiter has to squint or hunt for information, they're not going to, they're going to move on. They spend less than 10 seconds during the initial review of a resume. Um, so something to keep in mind. <laughs> yeah, don't do that, Christian. I can actually, you know what, while we're sitting here and feel free anybody to ask a question, I'm going to pull up and I've, I've written a shock a lot of content on page length i will share with you the one that kind of gives you the um the down and dirty on it uh, so if anybody wants to shout out a question or if somebody if somebody types something in and someone wants to read it to me i'm just going to pull this up for you real quick there's one more in the chat that says oh. do you do employers find humor and personality in a resume unprofessional that is such a great question. I absolutely love that. Um, actually, we did a study maybe a, two years ago now where we asked um, employers if they pr wished they could learn more about a person's personality before they got to the interview phase um, with a candidate. And the majority said yes. They would like to have a better sense of your personality. However, um, I always recommend following the same rules that my girlfriends and I used to follow when we were dating. On your first date, be yourself, but be 80% of yourself. I don't mean lie, I mean hone it down. So that's the same kind of thing you wanna keep in mind when you're writing your cover letter and your resume. The resume is still kind of a cut and dry document. You can't insert a ton of personality into it, except for maybe that professional or executive summary at the top. That's where you can get a little bit more creative, but there are other ways to kind of imbue your personality. The cover letter, which incidentally, employers have said they actually care more about now than they did before the pandemic because um, interviews are less likely to take take place in person. They're less likely to meet you in person. Hey, you can start a job with ever meeting a person in real life. And so they're looking for opportunities to basically create connections and get to know you better. So the cover letter has become one of the spots if it's a good one. <laughs> so if you're using it to tell a story, to highlight an anecdote that highlights a certain skill set you have that's very relevant to the role, that's a great way the summary on your LinkedIn profile is a great place to talk in first person about what you're passionate about and why are you pursuing the work you're doing today. That's a great place. You tone it down a little more in the resume itself. So yeah, no knock knock jokes. Um, save those for the interview. Maybe feel out your, your, your interviewer before you start. But one thing I would say is definitely when you are looking at different opportunities, and I know there's so many companies that work with four geeks, talk to people, talk to graduates who've worked in that company and get a sense of what is that culture like. And that also has to do with the humor. Are, you know, are they super dry? Do they like to hang out together? Are they, what's the vibe there? Even if everyone works remotely, what's the vibe working with one another? Because that's going to give you a sense as to whether or not what you want to put into your application is going to be well received and frankly if it's going to be a good fit for you because if you love to crack jokes all the time and they are so stern and serious and dry you don't want to work there that's going to be miserable for you um so you really have to think about what do you want in a job and what types of companies do you would you want to work for and that's going to help you also decide how much of my personality i can throw out there and um, I know you guys are going to continue with this presentation anyway, but I'll go mute and I'll just put all the links into the, the messaging system afterwards. But I have one on actually how to insert personality into your job application. So that, believe it or not, we've actually written about that. <laughs> You're very welcome. Anything else that I can help with? 
even if it's a long one and I and I can uh, find you a resource to share while you guys are doing the rest of your stuff because I know I know time's at a premium here. Well, if that's it, thank you so much for letting me um, bogart your meeting for a little bit. Um, I hope it was helpful. I will add those links into the messages for you. And if I think there are a couple others that might be interesting, I have one that breaks down the job search process into those phases that I find very helpful. Um, I've gone through a number of job searches myself over the years. Uh, and so I'll put those in there, but otherwise, um, best of luck with all your projects tonight and just keep kicking butt and shining. Take care. Amanda, we really appreciate your time and all your advice. That was a really great presentation. Of um, course. These QR codes here, that's your LinkedIn? No, both of those are two, two different Fast Company articles. One is on Resume Trends for 2024 and one is on um, job search trends in general for 2024. Um, but everything that I'm branded under is Job Search Amanda. So my my LinkedIn, luckily there are not a million Amanda Augustines running around out there, so I'm good to go. Um, but I can also put that in the chat for anybody who would like access to it. I think, I think that would be awesome. I'm sure a lot of people wanna connect with you if you wanna drop your, drop your LinkedIn or however they can connect with you or find more information would be awesome. Perfect, will do. And thank you again for coming. You're very welcome. I'm going to I'm going to mute myself and and give you back your 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 deck. Beautiful. Okay, so we're going to move right into the project. So our first group up is the yummy vegan food so you guys can take over and blow us away. There you go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's dive right into it. All right, can everybody see my screen? All right, perfect. All right, so what we have here, as we stated, yummy vegan food. Our slogan, uh, if it ain't vegan, we leaving. Uh, shout out to my boy, Jay, for that one. Um, you know, briefly, table of contents. You know, first thing we're going to do, we're going to meet the team. You know, we're going to talk more about the web app itself. And then we're also going to discuss the functions um, that we've apply to the web app as well uh, go over the challenges you know the biggest thing that you know we learned um that we overcame during this process and then also the future capabilities you know some of the things that we see the app doing and some of the things that we would like to implement and add um as time progresses all right so first thing you know we want to meet the team here you know we all come from different walks different lives of of a background you know, for me personally, my name is Legend. Um, I have no type of background in, you know, uh, software development, no coding or anything, but I just love the, the problem solving, the technical aspect of going from concept to creation. Um, so that's one thing that really um, made me interested in software development. Um, what about you, Ms. Julie? Hi, uh, my name is Julie. And uh, I would say I'm, you know, like a musician and a restaurant manager um so i have no technical background um i did a little bit of like audio engineering but you know not coding or anything like that um but what really got me into full stack or at least the idea of it was that i could be creative but also have the technical aspect of it so it reminded me of you know music for me so um yeah um I'm just kind of excited to get into the full stack development world and just software development in general. So my name is Jay. Um, I'm married with uh, five kids. I'm a radiologic technologist. I do x-rays at the local hospital. Uh, I don't really have much of a background in technology either. Um, so I just kind of wanted to do something that would enable me to have like more of a hybrid lifestyle, work from home. Um, I definitely like tech. So this is definitely a fun adventure for me. The problem solving, like Legend mentioned, the concept of creation, the ability to think something up and realize that you can actually create it. So that's, you know, definitely a fun aspect of it. And uh, I'm excited and looking forward into the next few steps of my journey. Okay. Okay. Uh, my name is Anmasu. Um... I'm originally from Ethiopia, I live in Maryland. So I have a little bit background 
on the software side, but uh, my experience is all in hardware side. I, I use YouTube and uh, Udemy to do some website. I just like copy paste uh, and I jump from place to place. So I join before Geek Academy to, to make everything is on the right track. Uh, hopefully I'll get uh, everything what I'm looking. So uh, I'm past to legend. All right, perfect. Um, and we do have our fifth member up here. That he wasn't able to make it today. Um, Chat GPT was also a huge um, success <laughs> in helping us get through this. Um, always being there for us at the end of the day uh, when we had some crazy questions and trying to figure out what was going on. Um, also our mentors. <laughs> yes, yes, the mentors too as well. Mentors too as well, especially um, Nancy um, and Ernesto. I feel like they spent a lot of time with us just in our group. Uh, within itself after we were going through certain things. So huge, huge uh, shout out to them and uh, thank you for everything. And so Valerie and Brittany for us too. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So let's dive into it. You know, introducing yummy vegan food. As we said, if it ain't if it ain't vegan, we leaving. Um, and the the reason for this app, you know, what we wanted to essentially bring to the table and offers is um, a multi-functional tool, you know, that's offering features such as comprehensive uh, recipes, um, a database, recipe database, where they can get on this website. And essentially they may not be interest, interested in restaurants, but they do want to create something at home. Um, we create that flexibility. Um, also the restaurant locator, not only locally, but internationally too as well. And uh, Jay will really discuss and dive more into that. Um, and at the end of the day, this is all aimed at facilitating and enhancing the vegan lifestyle. Um, I think we're, we're in a time and an era where a lot of people are very conscious of what they are, you know, putting in their bodies. Um, and I think this was a, a great tool for us to utilize. And then we also recognize some of the challenges that um, anybody who is a vegan that they face, as we stated, just suitable recipes, um quality restaurants we feel that is a big thing um going somewhere where some of the it's not cross-contamination going on you have restaurants that may have vegan dishes but you know no telling what is going how it's being prepared in the back you know so we want us to be mindful of that too as well um and then we were like we stated we recognize the growing interest in veganism and the potential market demand um, for that too as well so not only for food but just different products and services, you know, too, as well. So we're getting ready to dive in. Now, right after this, Julie's going to pull up the page. We're going to walk through it. So, you know, some of the things that we're going to be discussing um, mainly is just to log in and sign out, um, being able to register, you know, for getting a password, being able to get that email sent to you so you can create a new one. Um, as we stated before, being able to locate restaurants near you locally and internationally. So, if you're driving down a street, you can find something. If you're taking a flight somewhere, you're able to, to locate some restaurants. And then also looking at your favorites. You know, once you get in there and you do find a restaurant that you like, how you're able to save it and also delete it, delete it too. And then also we're going to touch on the recipes um, and how you will have access to them. All right, Julie, I'm going to unshare and you are up. Sounds good. All right, uh, we were able to get our website deployed. So anyone with this link can go ahead and see our web page. It is almost mobile ready, but right now just computer ready for our website. So let's just have that load. It's a little slow today. <laughs> okay, um, this is our our homepage, but um, Admus is going to start with the portion that he worked on. All right, over here, contact us and log in. So you tell me where to go, Admus. Okay, uh, thank you, Julie. So uh, in any uh, dynamic website, you need to have login, log out, register, everything. So in our case, we need to create our uh, user. So first we have to go to the login and if we have already account, we can use the email and the password, but as any user, you have to go to the create new 
account so when you are clicking on the create new account let's go to the uh the page for the registration so you need to provide your name your email password and confirm your password and then if you click on the submit one so it will take to you the login page but if you have already the account uh, if you click on the already have account then it will uh take you okay so uh, let's put the, uh, the email and the password sorry it's actually working really slow right now um i'm not quite sure why Mm, okay. One second. Oh, okay. Um, technical troubles. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry for that. Do we want to cover a different part of the presentation real quick? Maybe like the challenges? <laughs> yeah, let me jump into there. Give me a second. Yeah, jump into the challenge. Since we're encountering one right now, we might as well talk about it, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. This one's again. Okay. All right. So as she's getting that together, um, of course, you know, as we're facing now, you know, there's always going to be some challenges. There's going to be some bugs. Um, what we're going to do, we're just going to talk about those right now. And then once the website is up, we'll go back to them too as well. But, you know, um, one of the main aspects that I was, you know, able to work on that the team trusted me in was just the recipes. Um, and what we were able to do, we were how we were able to put those recipes on the home page where at any point in time, three different recipes are going to be rendered on the home page where you have access to them. So once you do click on, you know, get recipes, it will show you the ingredients, the directions on how to cook it, and then also um, the caloric intake of it too as well and all the nutritional facts. You know, for me, the challenge was um, getting all those, you know, getting into the arrays um, and pulling those objects and then creating uh, components for that to be shown so I'm not repeating myself uh, with the code. And then also, as I stated, the component structure and then the loop imp uh, implementation as well with having different recipes show up um, at different times too as well. Um, what about you, Jay? Well, some of the challenges that I found um, while doing my Google Maps API was really learning the differences between syntax, the difference in syntax between different programming languages. Like generally in HTML, JavaScript, we have stuff like class and, you know, we have different closing tags. So when you go into React components, you have to structure it just a little bit differently. So I ran into a lot of a lot of issues initially trying to diff figure out the difference between something even as simple as class versus class name. You know what I mean? Um, and also just incorporating and using different APIs. You know, I, I had a couple of issues when I was rendering the Google Maps API. I had to also enable the Places API so that way we were able to have different functionalities. And those are just some challenges that I have. But I also had a lot of growth. I had a lot of learning uh, because there's a lot of things happening in the back end of something even as small as that that you didn't even realize. You know, it's almost like seeing behind the curtain. You know what I mean? You know, in like the Wizard of Oz, when you go behind the curtain and you see the witch operating the different machinery and stuff like that, it's almost like, so this is how these things are done. So those are just a couple of examples of things that I ran into. All right, perfect. What about you, Adam? So, uh, could you kind of share with us some of the challenges that you face? Sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, while I'm working on the authentication, I have faced a lot of issues. The major, uh, the major issues was uh, getting used to collaborative coding work with the environment because uh, uh, when you are doing the authentication, you have to go to the um, the confirmation and uh, also your password must be uh, secret and no one can access your password and also it must send you an email when you are when you forget your yeah, the password 
So uh, these are the challenges I face and also exploring the functionality of the terminal and the code editor tools. So while I'm working on the uh, code space, uh, I face these challenges. Uh, so uh, if Julie, you're ready. And yeah. From here. Yeah, talking about bugs and issues. Um, <laughs> A lot of it, I guess, for me was, you know, doing things for the first time, addressing whether it's coding or, you know, these are the first time that we're seeing the issues. So figuring out, well, where do we go and look for? Is it, you know, Stack Overflow? You know, well, of course, ChatGPT. <laughs> we use that less and less, I promise, later. Um, and then going to our mentors and teachers um, and um, teachers' assistants for help, of course. Um, but yeah, those are those are some of the challenges. We all face them in different ways and to different um, intensities. Um, so going back to the website, um, and it was working, of course, right? It was just being slow. <laughs> so going back to the registration page. All right, I'm assuming I will be your hands. Okay. So if it already exists. If you wanted to do a new one, which uh, can you uh, share your screen? Oh, oh, I thought I was sharing my screen. I am so no, sorry. You <laughs> you okay. Wait, stop screen sharing. Now, now you do. Now you do. Okay. Can you guys see? Yes. Perfect. All right. Yes. Uh, as any user, you need to have the, uh, the name, the email, the password, and the information. Password, if the email is already exists, as you see, it helps you to use a different email. So the pop up message is like, thank you for your sign up. You have successfully registered under the yummy vegan restaurant. So uh, to log in, you need to come here and then use your email and the password. Welcome to Yummy. Okay, in here, um, as you see, it's like as any website or any web application, you have to have the login and the logout. So uh, uh, before we log out, if we have a comment, I'm working on the comment too. So if you are clicking on the contact us, so it will text you your name and email, and then your comment is going to be sent to our email. Uh, when you are submitting this, it will show you the thank you message, and uh, on our email, we'll see the comment. So if you are refreshing on this one, we'll see the last comment from test. Okay, uh, so here it is, yes. The last comment is hello. So you can see the comment or the contact information, then you can you can replay or you can do action depends on the, the information. Okay, let's go back to our website. So after you logged in, you can logged out. So if you click the logged out, it will take you back to the main page. So it will require you, you ensure. Okay, let's go to the next presenter. It's gonna be um, let's see. Is it me? Is it Jay? Yeah, because so Jay is just gonna touch on um, yeah, building the restaurants uh, locally and internationally. Okay. So if we go to find locations, um, that's a great way to enter in a city or a state or really just a, um, any in, even international places. So let's just go with Denver as an example. And when you type in Denver, the, there's going to be re vegan restaurants near you that will automatically populate. And when you pick on any one of those markers, what you're going to see is information pertaining to that particular restaurant. And then you're going to be able to call them. You're going to see 
and we have these nice carousels. That way you'll kind of be able to scroll through the pictures to kind of see what you're getting yourself into. I know I don't like to pick a restaurant without kind of seeing exactly what the meals are presented out and how they look. So you're able to click on certain links to go to the website. You see the price range, the ratings, which are always important. Obviously the opening hours and like I mentioned, the website you're able to go to directly just to get a, get a little bit more information on that. And that'll happen in any um, any city that you see. So now we're looking at City or City Denver and you're able to look at the website and just kind of scroll through there. So that's, uh, that's our Google Maps API. Yeah, if it wanted to load, it'll show you that we have a website here. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually we'll have the Google Maps link here. Just being slow today. We all needed a little bit of break. Okay. Um, all right. Going on to the favorite function, um, we are able to favorite once you are logged in. So if you're not logged in and you want to, it will tell you, hey, you can sign up, go, which will take you back to the registration page, or you can go ahead and log in. We did do a little bit more on the. Um, email features to make sure that it's completely, you know, fits the requirements. So that's something that we added on top of just the HTML of course, if it is not correct, it will tell you that. Um, one thing that I know I must have worked on is the forgot password. So we can actually use that now. This email does not exist. That means that I didn't actually set it up. So let me use the one that we set up together. There we go. So now that we are logged in, you can go to any one of these three um, cities. Ledge is also going to talk later about the links to them here. But once you are in these top cities, and these are curated by us, um, just the top nine restaurants of these three big cities. Later on, we can add more, of course. But if you favorite that restaurant, you'll be able to see all the information here, minus the pictures. That can be from the Google, like we talked about. Uh, we also have a second API just for fun. And while you're researching, this one does take a little bit longer, so you can go ahead and play a snake game, if you wish, because who doesn't like a good old snake game? Um, <laughs> the high score is saved over here. If you decide, you know, I'm done playing, whether it's loading or not, you can just go ahead and hide that. So that will um, show up. And let's see if we can get that one to pop up. We'll see. Oh, that's not the home page. Oh, sorry, guys. Anyway, so when we go to the favorites of that user, we'll be able to see all your favorites here. You can go ahead and delete them from your favorites here. Or if, let's see, that's from California. Or if you're on this card, you can go ahead and unclick to unfavorite them as well. And uh, I'll let Legend go ahead and talk about this beautiful homepage that he made. All right. So, yeah. So if we scroll up to recipes that we have there, um, you're able to have access to them, get recipes. So as soon as you click on get recipes, it's going to take you to our page here. Of course, give you the, the name of the recipe too as well with a beautiful picture description. And as we stated before, the ingredients, um, you know, the instructions on how to cook it, and then also the nutritional facts that also comes along with it as well. And, you know, as we were creating this, you know, um, we were also looking at, you know, what are some things that we could, you know, add to as well. Um, and some of the things that we wanted to wanted that we wanted to do was number one, just share feedback on recipes. Um, so, you know, if, if you are taking that time to create this recipe, you can leave that on a website too as well. And then also creating a community where you can post and engage with, you know, other members. You know, we understand that you're not always running to somebody who is a vegan. Um, but being able to create that that safe space on here where they can discuss, um, you know, restaurants and also recipes and products too as well, um, just creates that that community, you know, environment, you know, at the end of the day. And then as well as being able to share your favorite vegan restaurants, you know, with other individuals too as well, introducing people to, you know, new restaurants, new dishes, you know, especially in your area. 
um, too as well. You know, so, you know, that's our website right there. Um, you know, as we as we stated, you know, we've taken that time. You know, we had our challenges. We had our ups and downs. But at the end of the day, this is our our final project. Um, you know, we hope that y'all enjoyed it, you know, just as much as we did. All right. And then one more, if I can share my screen here, of course, uh, some of the things that we have here our secret sauce that we stated, of course, we have our JavaScript, we have our React, you know, HTML and CSS um, and our Python. Those were our, our main things that we focused on, you know, for our for our, our web app right here. You know, so at the end of the day to us, it was very much a success. So, you know, once again, thank you to Four Geeks uh, for this opportunity, Laura, Ernesto, wow. Nancy and everybody else. So thank you so much. Yeah, before we close one more, uh... Can you share your screen? Uh, we need to present what is our next plan. Yep, I discussed that already. Oh, okay. Yep. And on the chat, we shared the link. So if you guys wanted to share it out or check it out for yourself. <laughs> it might be a little slow, depending on how fast your internet is. Mine's a little slow today. <laughs> We're also taking donations on the uh, on the app, so feel free to donate. Someone will share their um, code for that. <laughs> Guys, anybody have any questions or comments for this group? Thanks, Carlos. Nice. Well, Ernesto, you got faster internet, <laughs> so I'm glad it's fast for you. <laughs> oh, keep in mind it is not phone ready yet, just on websites. Sorry, guys, I was having some audio issues here. Um, if you have any questions, you can either ask out loud or you can post them in the chat. Any questions, comments? Hey, what's up? I, I would ask if, if looking at your final project, the, the four of you, did you like, did you have any idea you would accomplish this type of, of, of projects after four months in the program or does it, did you have something else in mind? Absolutely not. Personally, um, I, I definitely, and you know, we talked about this at length, you know, uh, just the kind of nervousness that we had going into the project and how we've grown even doing the project, you know, even something simple as the terminal, something that I personally was intimidated by at first. And now it just became like second nature, you know what I mean? Um, dealing with the environment, you know, we have like 36 branches and you know we're get checking out and pulling and this and that and it just becomes second nature we're still you know we still have some uh, um shortcomings within and stuff like that but it's definitely something that we never i personally never thought that um you know i I'd, I'd be able to 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 understand the way i understand it now and i know there's plenty more to learn but i'm at a level now where i'm comfortable you know understanding certain terminologies and certain commands and stuff like that so I'm sure I speak for everybody, but obviously they can speak for themselves also. Yeah, I would kind of piggyback off of that. For me, it's um, sometimes you don't know how much you know until you start implementing it. And I think that was the biggest thing for me. It's kind of like being in training, you know, for the whole summer, then come game time, you don't know how strong um, and fast you are from all that work that you put in. So, um, you know, just this project gave me a lot of confidence. Um, you know, not only confidence that I know what I'm doing, but also know how to be resourceful too as well, you know, with, um, you know, reaching out to the mentors, you know, and everything else and just being resourceful online too as well. So I really say this, um, you know, gave me a lot more confidence and also with the group that I was in, you know, everybody is, you kind of think everybody, somebody's up here, you're down here, but you kind of realize that you're all on that same level. 
you know, and so you can bounce things off of each other and what somebody, what you may not be good at, somebody else is good at, you know, so it all comes together and this kind of fits like a puzzle. And then, you know, you have something like this, you know, for me, they were like, legend, we think you should do the homepage. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know about that. Like maybe you, you should do it and I'll help you out. But, you know, they definitely have faith in me. And so I definitely appreciate that. But like I said, it really gave me a lot of confidence to really be able to execute some of the things that, that we learned in class. Yeah, just being able to kind of put together everything that we've learned um, while doing these little mini projects in class and trying to put that together was our main mention, like main, you know, goal, of the final project. That being said, you know, adding all these little features that we haven't worked with before was really fun. Um, I know we gained a lot of confidence through the project and I know about, I don't know about them, but I know I'm excited to, you know, make more projects for sure. Yeah, for me, just like I was trying to develop some small static website using YouTube and Udemy, but I need to know about the backing, everything. So when I'm landed on this on this project, I I definitely know about the backend, everything, the front end, the backend, how it works and how the logic and the algorithm is working. So I can say I'm good. Uh, I'm 70% on how to know about the, the backend. So that, that's, that's very good. Thank you guys for all your kind words. Very nice job, guys. I really like this group. I like how you guys all have different strengths and different weaknesses, and you all came together from like different walks of life, different backgrounds, and you all made it work. You made a really nice app. I, I like this group. I like your project. That's why I put you guys first. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very nice job. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. I've heard a lot about all you guys, actually. All, uh -oh. all you guys have received good praise from both okay, your teachers good. and your mentors. So very, very nice job. All right, we're gonna move into project number two, which as a little bit of a anti-climax, instead of having four people, they did it with just two people. They made it happen. We have Maria and Michael with Pimp My Ride. And Maria is here on campus. Awesome, hello. How are you? And here we go. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Nice to see you all. So, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Maria. Today, I'm joined by my teammate, Michael, for the project presentation. Um, it's nice to finally meet people here that were behind the screen during the online bootcamp. First of all, I wanted to say thank you to for this academy for having us here and giving us this opportunity. Um, so let's get started. Um, me and Michael are super excited to share with you Pink Marad web, web application. This is a car repair uh, status tracking application where customers, people like you and me, can easily check their vehicle repair status in real time in a few clicks and get the estimate completion date. Shortly, we'll give you a project um, overview and its features and our roles on it. A few words about our team. Um, a little bit about myself. I am originally, as I said before, my name is Maria. I'm originally from Russia and my current occupation is a realtor. I don't know, one day it hit me, um, I can do better. I can learn something like different and new. So here I was applying for um, coding uh, bootcamp without any coding experience. Michael. Hi, thanks Maria for the introduction. I'm Michael Marichada. I'm currently a handyman and property manager, and I'm excited to move into a career in software development. I joined Four Geeks Academy to streamline my and guide my career change. I was really looking for the fastest way to program and become a software developer. 
So I joined a boot camp. I have to say, I really do love the program and especially with the support the Four Geeks Academy provides, I'm super excited to now call myself a full stack developer. All right, sounds good. So now let me tell you how the idea of the project was born. So some uh, time ago, I was renting out uh, my cars on Turo um, car sharing platform. I believe you guys are aware of it. Uh, it's very popular in Miami. So um, many uh, people experienced, like many um, car owners experienced this uh, like difficulties when renters damage the cars. Even though like they they can just easily fill up the gas like premium car with the cheapest gas and then you like face this um whatever mechanical problems right so um i started to work closely um with the small auto repair shops uh and i witnessed first stand of challenges they face particularly in managing customer inquiries about their vehicle repair status. So these small business, businesses actually, like they cannot afford this, even a receptionist to handle easy um, customer inquiries like about the vehicle repair status as well. So we, instead of instead of uh doing the car repairs they actually doing uh they they could spend hours on the phone answering same questions over and over again so this inspired us to create a solution a web app that streamlines and automate this process it can empower small businesses to deliver exceptional customer service while optimizing their operation efficiently. So let's go to the app and Michael will drive you through. Great. Thank you, Maria. Let me pull that up for you. Awesome. Presenting to you our website, Pimp My Ride. So check out our landing page. This is uh, some really good CSS magic we made right here, and it's made with a minimalist and modern design. Uh, next, we have our nav bar with our home button and our sign up button. Third, on center of our landing page, we have our login button and our quick search. Next, let's go through, through the meat of here. We have a few good things to read here on our landing page and something you can check out about the businesses. All right, next we have our footer here where people can subscribe to our email list. And also we have quick links to the owner login, customer dashboard, and sign up. We also have our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube all over here. Great. So what we're going to do now is we're going to act like a new customer and sign up. So I'm going to go ahead and hit our sign up button and I am going to sign up myself. Great guys. And you can always call me if you want to give me a job. I actually got a job already, Michael, remember? <laughs> yeah, sounds like we're all set then. <laughs> Great, so we first made a customer and before this, we're gonna have to make a, we're gonna have to log in as our user and we're going to make a work order. Uh, here we go. There we 
last few spells they are. Alright, let's uh let's check this out here. We're gonna log in. Oh, sorry, we we have to go to the owner login button, which is down here. <laughs> Excuse me. Great, so welcome to our business owner homepage. Here we have our populated customers that are already populated. We can either pick through them and it'll actually populate down here or we can search. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my first name in. If I could spell it right, great. I'm gonna put my name in here. We're gonna select the make of a car. And as you can see, we already have all the makes and models implemented um, we're going to put our year in our vin number and here is our license plate it is all right and i'm going to copy this for later great and the color is black and you know i just want to say that our car is actually a ford skate Okay. All right, so here we're going to put our image files in. And with this image file, we actually used the Cloudinary API. And so these images are actually going online to the API, and we're able to get those images straight back. And just give me a second to implement all these images. And then as you see, we have a bunch of pictures of the car and we have a few of the damages. Great, so we're gonna go ahead and leave some comments for our technicians, just so they know. I know it's pretty obvious, but we have da damage on the rear right bumper and fender. Great. and. We're setting our completion date about two weeks ahead. All right, so we have, now we're gonna make our custom progress bar. Since we don't have, this person doesn't have insurance, we're gonna go ahead and skip these few steps and we're going to pick these rest of the ones. All right, great, so I'm gonna create this work order and I'm gonna look down into my work order history and we will find our new work order right here. Awesome. So now that we have all our work orders here uh, from on the owner dashboard and you can see its current status. Great. So now we're going to check out the work order details. We have our image slider right here, which contains up to 12 images. And this is great. Next, we have our progress bar. So this is what is going to tell our customer what um, what stage their car is in. So if the parts are, have been ordered and the parts have already been delivered, we can let them know that labor is in progress. And then we're just going to go ahead and hit edit and save changes. And that will update. It. Um, say also, say our customer needed to change their phone number. We can also, also go edit that. Right. Um, we can also edit the year on the car or any of these details if that is wrong. And then what's good here is that we can also leave some notes for the next technician. All right, so we're letting everybody know that Kyle has started the work. Great, so from there, we have edited and updated our work order. So now we're gonna go ahead and log in as a customer. So there we go. Uh -oh.
Hey, All Mike, right. make sure to log out as a as an owner first. Yeah, we can check do that. I I believe maybe I put a little typo on there. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and log in as a different user. Um, let me go ahead and log in as an owner. All right. All right, so we'll go ahead and check out Ernesto's here. Um, I'm going to get his email, right, and then we'll log in. Must have been a typo in the password. Great. So here we go. We have Ernesto's work order here. He can always change his name if anybody spelled it wrong um, or if – and also his number. So we'll just try that, right, and – and then we can, from here, we have the work order histories, and this can have multiple work orders. Awesome. And here we can see that labor has completed, and our car is being prepared for pickup, and that is something that we updated earlier. And we have our work order details. Awesome. And so a few things I want to run you through now is we have our customer quick search, and this this is actually going to this the license plate um we get the license plate we get the license plate here and our email address and we can send a verification code to our email and that will verify it and we'll log straight into our work order and then we can also log in um and if we forget our password that'll send us an email straight to our email and a link that we can reset our password um Great. Thank you. And this is our website. Hit my ride. Appreciate it. And uh, let me swing back to our presentation. One moment. Do you guys have, have any questions <laughs> about yeah. that? It's all good. Let's keep going. Um, we want to let you know that our front end was made with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and Bootstrap. Our back end was made with JWT Extended Flask, um, Python, and SQL Alchemy. And just to mention, we did use JWT extended to implement um, stronger authentication system. We also use the SendGrid API to help us send and receive emails for verifying our verifying our um, our password, as well as verifying for the quick search. And Cloudinary API is what we use to upload photos to the API. And I wanted to say, I really enjoyed working with images with Cloudinary. Not only the application is very awesome, but it actually makes life easy because you're able to edit, resize images. Plus, it makes it easy to host images as well as it's an API and you can post and delete photos. Although it did add a good amount of difficulty. Organizational tools we use is GitHub, Google Draw for mapping out views, user projects using user stories, and to map out our database, we use Quick Database Diagrams, aka QuickDB. Other things that we learned on the go, as I mentioned, was the Cloudinary Image API, SendGrid API with email verification codes, and JWT Extended Advanced Verifications, along, along with using lists and arrays in SQL Alchemy. Maria, I believe uh, you had a few things you wanted to say here. I think you're on mute. There you go. Can you hear me? All right. So I just wanted to say a few words about the challenges we have experienced during the development. 
So the hardest part, I guess, was the transition from learning the individual coding concepts to actually integrating them into a comprehensive project. Managing errors, the misspelling, syntax errors, resolving conflicts after pull requests were particularly tough. Me personally, I will never forget how to spell the license plate. Despite all the challenges, the journey has been rewarding and it's been a learning experience filled with problem solving and continuous improvement. Michael? Great. Hit my so, right to Oh, go ahead. No, it's okay. So we are going, uh, we actually um, planning to keep going on the project and this is the Pink My Ripe 2.0. So we're planning to improve it with text and email notifications to customers. And we're actually planning to make it as a platform. So this is where we have multiple uh users actually to have their own customers and then we also planning how to handle uh and track transactions and also we're planning to implement different languages like english spanish and russian <laughs> oh. michael All right, well, I just wanna give a shout out and a special thanks to our favorite teacher assistant, Nancy, our favorite teacher, Ernesto, and our favorite mentor, Christian. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. All right, I think Christian is here in the meeting too, so <laughs> he's getting a lot of love. <laughs> Big shout out to Ernesto, Ernesto Gonzalez, one of the mentors for helping me get the website deployed. Congratulations, you guys rocked it. Shout out to Brittany, Valerie, lots of love and praise here. Do you guys have any questions or comments for this group? I think Brittany's here too. We appreciate the mentor so much. Mentors are killing it. Yes, Ernesto Ernesto. Gonzalez, Christian Moreto, and Brittany Hooker, killing it. Uh, Sorry, I just yeah, I just wanted to ask Michael about the quick search. Did 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 you did you manage to like? Did you chose not to to show it? Uh, well, what happened was is. I, I used a personal email to, uh, and I have to actually check my email and all the right. other emails that were in were dummy data. So I couldn't actually check the email. On right. Stuff. Okay. Okay. So I, I get just it. Moved on. All right. All right. But, but it is functioning and working. Yeah. And it's <laughs> a nice feature. I think that's a nice feature because it yeah. saves the, it saves the, the customer, the, the sign up logging time. Yeah. I must've been nervous and, uh, made a little typo on my password. Ah, that's OK. <laughs> Don't worry. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. There's a question in the chat. What was your favorite part to work on? Uh, I really like the uh, the progress bar, like getting that little car. Christian helped a lot making it. And we like plugged it in and like it looks so much better. Maria, what was your favorite part to work on? Oh, my favorite part was working with Michael and Christian, actually, as a team. Uh, so during this month, we were actually, like, talking, um, like, I was waking up, talking to Michael, and then, so I was coding in the morning because, like, he is in California, so like it's three hours difference. So I was coding in the morning, he was watching, and then he was coding in the afternoon and I was watching. And then we had this mentor sessions with Christian where he was helping us. So that was like a interesting experience. Um, and 
I feel kind of sad. It's kind of over, but it's not over actually because well, we got a job, Michael, right? So, I mean, not the job, but I, at least the well, the the app to work on. We're still in this like car uh, repair business, so we'll make it through. I promise. Yeah. We got a project to work on. Yeah, we got a project. So, like, I'm very proud of us. We grow up during this month, uh, during this month. And uh, thanks to Christian. And also, I wanted to say thanks to Brittany. She was my, like, um, kind of last resort, whatever, how you call this in English. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, Ernesto, the mentor. Uh, I mean, the teacher, not the mentor, sorry. <laughs> Ernesto, thank you so much. Nancy, thank you so much. Guys, I'm very proud of, like, of you all. You made it. I'm happy to, like, to, how you call this, like, meet you, like, in my life or whatever. I wish you luck. Yeah, Marie, I feel the same way. I feel like uh, it's going to be really weird not seeing you and Christian all the time because I know we we uh, we join each other's mentor sessions a lot, so we we spend a lot of time together. You know, the daily. That's why out. you guys are part of Four Geeks Forever. You can connect with each other via Slack. You can join global mentoring sessions together. You can join your own private Google Meets together. You can keep working on your projects. That's what we aim for here is for you guys to keep these relationships even after graduation day. Any other questions? You just are getting a lot of praise here. So proud of you guys. It's awesome and rewarding watching the growth and seeing how far you guys have come. Bright futures for all of you here. And a lot of awesome projects. Great job. Proud of you. Hearts, hearts, hearts. <laughs> I just want to personally just say how awesome I think they uh, their project was because I know how difficult it was working with four people. So just the fact that they only did it with two, I could just imagine, um, you know, the the support, the collaborative effort that they you know put in with each other, and just that they were able to 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 pull this off. I'm not surprised, but I'm still just wowed. And they did a really. Like, I can't wait till my car breaks down so that way I can use their app. So yeah, I've just I, I think you guys did a wonderful job. Thanks, Jay. You know, but but I can't I can't imagine like with the with the uh, with the problems with branches and like you know <laughs> pull requests. I can't imagine having four members. That seems even harder. So much fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, we you know what we it, it and if it wasn't with you know the people at Four Geeks, it probably would have been a little bit more difficult, but. We really work well together. We listen to each other. We have fun. You know, we laugh. We joke. We play. And but you know, when it's time to to be serious, we're serious. So we we had a great team. So I, you know, that definitely plays a big part in it. Soft skills really are a big part of coding because when you're you know quote unquote stuck with people for hours upon hours upon hours, it's very easy to be at each other's throats if you're not if you don't have a good team. You know what I mean? So that that's really what it comes down to. All right, guys, can you just give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear me good or am I cutting up? Okay, cool. I have the next group presenting now. I just want to make sure my mic is still not failing me. So <laughs> we have Leo up next with his Ninja app. He is a solo group here tonight, completed this whole project on his own, which is very awesome. So I am going to pass it to Leo and you can take over. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Okay, let me share my screen. Okay. Okay, so good evening, everyone. My name is Leonardo Rodriguez. I'm from Miami. Part 60, and tonight I'm gonna show you my 
final project in this for geeks, for geeks academy so it's called ninja station it's gonna be a web app for gamers so let me get started so here it's a table of content we're gonna discuss today so first uh, i'm gonna talk to you about the project i'm gonna give you a short description about it and my project goals and then i, I share with you the major requirements, uh, how was the process of making it for me, the challenges I had, and the next features I would love to implement it. So first, uh, about this project, it's going to be a web app where all gamers can have their favorite games, their favorite stores, platforms, all in just one place. So in the team, it's going to be just myself. And okay, about this project. So as I said before, uh, you here you can explore a best library of games in every platform and stay updated in the latest releases. So and also, we uh, here have all the stores in market. So here I'm gonna share with you uh, two two great facts in the in this world. So uh, in this 2024. According to the most recent studies, around 31% of the world's population play video games, either on PC or on a console. So that's a big number. So in this kind of apps, we we have a big target. And the second one was that there's an average of 20 case video games releases yearly. So that's a big number too. And about these project goals, let me talk about the main ones which are going to be the retention engagement and community building so uh, i try to uh, get this uh, through this encouraging long term uh, loyalty through regular updates uh, keep user keep users hooked with interactive features and the most important one create a community of gamers that they can share their favorite games in this platform so the main requirements in this project were this one in the front end i worked with html5 css3 bootstrap and javascript all of them i applied them on a react app and i also used the flux technology and the app context to uh, to manage all the api calls and i also used the react router component to manage all the views and the components in the page. And in the back end, I worked with Python and its framework Flask. I worked with an SQL database, in this case was Postgres SQL, and I managed to uh, with this SQL, SQL Alchemy technology. And for the authentication, I worked with the JWT token. And if for achieve this uh, web app, I had to work with GitHub, where in its code space I spent almost all my time in this last month. And uh, with Four Geeks Academy, I had a lot of uh, tutor mentoring sessions, uh, and the Rock API, which was the API I used to build this project. Okay, and in the process of making it. I divided the project like in three <clears throat> stages. The first one was design all the views, choose the colors and the fonts that I used. And in this stage, I I worked with the Balsamic uh, website, which was awesome for it. And the stage two was the most difficult one, where I built a web app using all the technology requirements. And the stage three, that was <clears throat> Show, show the website to our family members and friends and evaluate all the feedbacks. So I had to do a schedule too. Then <clears throat> the first part of it was a design, as I said before, on the front end, build all the components and the views, and then to integrate the third party, third party API that was one of the most difficult parts for me and then to integrate my own RESTful API from the back end. So let me show you the website. She's going to be this one. <clears throat> Here.
here you can see logo and here some things we have. So first we have here a, a really simple Jumbotron. When you go down, you can see the best uh, 24, 2024 games that I render here, six cards with uh, the most the best games. So if you like, for example, this game, you can click and see more and you see <clears throat> all the uh, description of the game. So like the release date, platforms, the developers, the genres, and the publisher. Okay. So when you go down, you can see the features of the app. Just gonna friendly design. You can have also a wish list in this app. You can see all the games reviews and it's multiple platform. And here is the uh, footer. So uh, here you can see, as I said, the platforms, different platforms we have like PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox One. Here in the creation uh, creators part, you can see the most important crea creators in the industry. Uh, here you can see the different stores that are out there. And the most important part, the games. Uh, that I divide them in uh, genders. Here's you can see the action games. You go down. They're gonna look more. Okay. So and if you try, for example, you can see the description of them without being authenticated. But if you try to add them to your wish list, it's gonna send you to the login form which is gonna be this one. Or if you don't have any account, you can go to the get started. And then do your sign up, okay? You just sign up. <clears throat> and then when you, now when you go to a platforms, and for example, if you're a gamer uh, of PC, you can add PC, you see as bottom changed, or PlayStation 4, for example. Then you can go to the creators and I don't know, then is your favorite creator. You can add it to your list too. And in the games, if you like GD5, for example, or this one, okay. And then if you go here to your, the meet button, you can see your wish list, okay? That are gonna display your favorite games or if you change to your platforms or your creators. If you, for example, I don't know, you don't like PS4 anymore, you can remove it from there. Okay, so that's basically everything. Uh, I, in the future, in the near future, I will love to implement it, the option of buy. So to transform this into a store. So this is coming soon. Okay, let me go back to the presentation. <clears> hmm. <throat> Then I'm going to share with you the most difficult challenges I had. So <laughs> the first one was the third party API. The thing of that read and understand the API documentation and applied it was first was a, a headache for me uh, until I understood it. That was then it was easier. Okay. <laughs> After my own API, create all the routes and made them work. That was really challenging to, in the, to implement the authentication with WT and the synchronization part. In this part, I I couldn't do it without the my mentor that was Ernesto Gonzalez. Uh, shout out to him because without him, this this wouldn't be impossible. Okay, and the next features I would like to implement to this app, it's gonna be the emails. I would like to create a newsletter system for these uh, users in the in the app, and then implement a payment platform to transform this app into a store, as I said before, and uh, implement a search button that allow users to find their favorite game easier. Okay, and that's it. I will love to. In the end, I will. Love to thank my teacher Dylan and my teacher assistant Zach and my coding mentor Ernesto Gonzalez. Thank you guys. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> <Nice job. laughs>
That's so awesome that you completed this whole project on your own. We're talking here on campus about you know, how discipline and how that was a lot of time. You have to be able to complete a project like this by yourself. So big congratulations. Um, does you. anybody have any questions or comments for, I want to say for this group, for Leo? Just a great job, man. Great job all around. Um, you know, I, I love to play some video games. So just to have that as a resource is just really, you, you did a really great job and it looks amazing. I mean, just the layout of it and the functionality, uh, the styling of it, you, you really rocked it, man. Good job. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. The The styling part is my favorite one, you know? <laughs> I enjoy it. <laughs> okay. Any other questions, comments? Uh, you did a great job on that. I just want to say I love someone as myself. I'm on all platforms playing to have everything all in one place. That's that's a really awesome idea. I love how you put that together. Very functional. Like I would definitely use that. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. <clears throat> all right, then we are going to move into the last group, the last group of the night. Um, all of the the participants from the last group are here on campus with us. So just give us one moment while we set up all the audio and visual for the very last group, and then we will get started. Okay. Hello. Anyone can hear us? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, it seems so. Okay. There we go. Okay. Confirm that I can hear you. 
They all can hear us? Yes? Can you hear us? Yes. Yes, Julie. Yes. Okay. Julie, Nancy. Okay. Everyone. Okay. Loud and clear. Thank you very much. So, last project of NET. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Carlos Escalante, and here I am with Alain Estrada and David. Yes. And we are going to present the last project of the night, which is called Tini How, which is a basic guide for the immigrant. Uh, this is our final project. Um, we're coming from cohort Miami 61. And we're going to show you a little bit of this project that we developed with um, not also with a lot of interest in programming, but also with a lot of interest in a bringing a benefit to our communities of immigrants. So first of all, we would like to show you a little bit of the purpose of our app. Uh, some important facts that led us to uh, design and create this project for all of you. How was it built? Which means the technologies that we used. We're going to show you also how the app works and the different challenges that we faced throughout this process. Okay, so what is exactly Timmy How or how did it start? Um, Emigrating to another country, it's certainly a very challenging and difficult experience. We can talk about that from first approach because we all come from different different backgrounds and also different countries. For example, David and I, we all come from Colombia uh, and also Alain comes from Cuba. And as you may know, in, in Miami, which is the city that we are uh, currently now, uh, there is a huge amount of people who's coming from different countries. And one of the biggest challenges that a person who immigrates to this country is, is how to get to know all these basic skills and all these uh, basic uh, knowledge in order to gain certain stability into the country. So we came with this issue slash challenge and then we decided to create this app that is going to benefit all the people who immigrate into the country so that is the name um that we we gave it to the to the application which is called teamy how which comes from teach me how yes and this is a platform that is oriented to immigrants to the united states where if you want to learn all these basic skills and processes to gain stability in the country you can do it but also you will have um the possibility to become a tutor and teach these skills yourself and also get uh income for yourself uh what uh, brings like an outstanding characteristic to our application that we are not just any other app where you can uh, just download or buy a course, but this is more like a community. And we conceive Timmy How as a community in which all the people, either tutors, people who is pursuing um, like a pathway to become a tutor or teach. Uh, or deliver certain skills to be able to do so. And also these people like us who once came to this country with all illusions and craving for certain knowledge to be able to be connected and learn all these basic skills. Hello, everyone. I want to share with you. My name is David, David Garzón, and I come from Colombia. And I want to show, to share with you uh, some important numbers and facts about immigration in this country. The total of the USA population by now, I think we are close to the 350 millions because these numbers are from 2020. And from this amount of population, 13.7 no, consists of immigrants. And from this, 34% are of Latin origin. The projection suggests that by 2016, the Latino population could reach 
111 million and um, represent uh, almost a quarter of the population of the United States. But uh, these people have a lot of um, problems to access of the basic uh, services in this country. For example, 27% do not have a driver's license, 31% lack health insurance, and 67% having a legal need in the past five years. So what, what are the main barriers to get access to these, to these services? One of the principal is the language barriers, uh, lack of familiarity with the system, um, lack of information on how to access the benefits who provides the state, the, in the case of the legal assistance, for example, the high cost is a, is a great barrier for people. Uh, the lack of knowledge about the available options is also a uh, main barrier for access um, and the immigration status. So we can see now that we have a, a, a huge amount of population that we can impact with this application. We can add value at a lot of families, a lot, a lot of people, if we can um, impact in a positive way when, you, when we uh, help to grow as individuals and we grow as a community. And that's why we start to work in this project. Dale. So we really on the flexibility on React and Bootstrap or to design this user interface, like for gives give it to us the these really good tools. Um, from the back end, we use Python, the the JWT for the for the security login. Um, with this process, we we encounter many challenges, and also which we overcame with the support of the community, of course. And sometimes the problem uh, is getting results online with a few packages, installing packages from NPM. But sometimes it was hard work with Ernesto and Nancy in, in the terminals. So let's see the app. Let's see the app. Uh, going forward right there. Right. Now, David, let me share. All right. Just one second. Uh -oh. Oh, yeah. right. I'm not in the meeting. Wait. It's uh -huh. too there in the meeting. So let me let me get into the meeting right now and share my screen. So so then you can see. I think it's this one. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. This is. I think you're sitting right now. This is Timmy House. Timmy House is a single page application. When the here you 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 have in the number you sign in, and in the model you have the register, and um, we. We manage two kind of roles. We have a uh, 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 users providers. Uh, this is like like teachers and users consumers. This is like students. Some by, some people that uh, is come to us searching information. All right. Now, Carlos go to explain about the home and the way that we share the parts we start okay just as alain was saying uh this is the home page for timmy how in which we're trying to engage both tutors or teachers and students to become part of this community so uh as we were using react we can see this home as uh multi-component uh home page in which we have this big jumbo trunk right here we also get this which is certainly like a jumbo trunk as well in which we explain who we are 
our advantages from our competitors. And here we get to the most important part of the home page, yes, which is going to take you to the six different categories of courses that we offer, uh, being like the one in the top, the most important one that we are going to show you guys, which is immigration law. But we also got personal finances, legal advice, day-by-day how-tos, physical and mental health, home business, and then we get, we get back again to immigration law. When we check in this bottom that says see courses, we will be able to display the available courses in this category. So as you can see here, we have like a very small introductory video that we just created as a demo video coming from our official YouTube channel, but it will certainly include all uh, sorts of videos uh, belonging to this category as well. And here we have like the offer, the current offer of courses uh, in this category. So if you go to the bottom, you're going to see like the offer that we got. Okay. Right. This is this is this is the hook, the hook for this product. All right. All the immigrants is searching for for this information. And this information is free. If you see. We don't make the login yet. So when if you want to book a class, for example, now you have to register in the app. In the app. Sure. All right. This is this is the view of the courses of, of this user. This is a consumer user. It's my user. Uh, this is the courses that I am I'm getting getting info from this from these teachers. If I if I meet Pedro Perez, I can I can do like in Forbes use the Calendly and Debit API. We, we can use this for like like we use in the in the classroom with the with the mentors we can put the name and targets targets I put five gifts oh my god <laughs> it's four gifts competitors I'll Let, get a yeah <laughs> strata Let me put gmail.com. All right. You can put here anything we have prepared. I scale the event. You have to, to share something and put some text this. Right. And eventually, if I go to my mail, this works. This is the, the beautiful of of Usan and Debbie API and go to right, I, right here. You see, Pedro Perez wants want to know if I if I want to be in that class or not. Just like we have in for this. So what we have right here, what we have right here, this is this is a way way to get in to get to get money from 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 this for for the private phone and for the t-shirts all right so right now if if i get in logo out and i go to sign all right i am a right now i am a t-shirt let's use that bro up right here a t-shirt or provider mm -hmm. right here pedro Perez. It's the same teacher that I'm we are seeing, right? But we have to use their, their, their email. Is this one? Oh, all right.
So now I am a tissue. Is the other role that I'm talking about in the first. Now Pedro Pérez can see their students, can see her scores, and eventually he, he has here Endeavor Calendi. They can go to, to their Calendi. They can see her courses. This is part of, of the APR of Calendi. They can put here and, and share the link of Calendi, and eventually uh, in, the, in the second iteration of this project, we, we want to, to him, this Pedro Perez, manage these courses, creating these host courses, and debit the Calendi URL, and all the things like payment, like payment, like, like a payment system. So let me, let me log out the app. Go refresh here. Okay. So taking, taking the app from here, um, the presentation. Yeah, the presentation of the app. Basically, everything comes back to the home in which we are going to have also like like this uh, footer in which we show like the tutors that we have, the courses that we have uh, available once again in each of the categories. And we will also have like other roles. So basically, um, we we didn't create the view in which this user student will be able to pay for his classes. However, this is certainly going to be a process in between being able to see the course and also getting access to a Calendly application to book the classes within. So now we are going to see the different challenges that we faced through the development of this application. Okay, as immigrants ourselves, one of the biggest challenges that we faced was trying to work together as a team. How do three people coming from different backgrounds and also working were able to work within one single project? I believe and we believe that was the biggest challenge. However, if we wanna be technical about this, using all these technologies that we had like very little time considering that we're in a boot camp uh to learn and to study it's certainly a, a challenge and it will be a challenge for the future on uh since all these technologies are continuously improving and changing and also through this learning process we faced uh the task of integrating our individual knowledge uh, something that we didn't mention when we were talking about the technologies that we used is that uh, some of us did uh, graphic design beforehand. We also did like a couple artistic things. So we also used some of these applications and knowledges and put them together to make them work for the sake of developing the app and the application itself. Um, other than that, common development issues such as syntax errors, debugging, uh, the JWT authentication, which is certainly going to be an issue every now and then. Uh, however, we overcame these um, all these kind of issues, and we were able to develop the application until the point or to the point that we have it right now to this extent. So that's it. That's it. That's it for tonight. Uh, we would like to thank you. We would like to thank Ernesto and Nancy for being um, such so amazing patient. people, so patient with us, you know, despite of all these um, language barriers and cultural barriers, we were able to, to accomplish this. Uh, it was a big challenge, however. Uh, we believe that not only because of Timmy Howe, but because of, of our own experience, uh, learning has an empowering, an empowering um, feeling and emotion. So Timmy Howe, it's a project that is not only ours. It's the result of many, many things that we did throughout, not only about the bootcamp, but uh, throughout all 
our lives. So we would like to thank you and also thanking for gigs for the opportunity and hosting this um, presentation for us. Thank you. Very nice job, guys. I love this project. I told them when they were rehearsing with me that when you make a project that's like, it's a unique type of product offering. It's not, you know, a Netflix clone. It's not an Amazon clone. It's its own type of value proposition, you know, that has real potential to make it in the market today. And I give them a lot of props for taking, you know, experiences from their lives, things that they felt personal to themselves, and making it into a project and making it something so, so great like this. So my big congratulations. But does anybody else have any questions or any comments that they'd like to add to this group? You can ask a lot of people in the chat. Oh, there's telling you to mute. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, sorry if there was a feedback. We're all here on campus together. Our fault. Now it's better. Anybody else have any, or anybody have any questions, any comments for this group? Stylish and useful. Great job. Congratulations. You guys rocked. Love your project. Saving lives. Excellent job. All right. In that case, if all the projects are done, I'm going to give a quick wrap up for tonight. I guess I will <laughs> go here in front of the camera. Thank you, guys. You guys can have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. So it, all in all, we had four projects present tonight. These four groups are ready to take on the challenge of Geek Force, which is their career support part of this boot camp. We'd like to jokingly say that there are two parts to this boot camp. The first part is learning your technical skills, and the second part is learning your career support skills and actually going a job so you guys are ready for part two um but we always do this event on a friday night for a special reason because we want you guys to to celebrate to go home to your families to enjoy to take one weekend off of all the stress that you've been feeling for the last 16 weeks it's like you know i'm done i want i want to have that done feeling i want to go home i want to chill have a drink with your family, go out, go out to dinner, enjoy your Saturday, enjoy your Sunday, which is Cinco de Mayo, by the way. So everybody have a, you know, <laughs> a good time. <laughs> Pour it up, have a good time. And then Monday is when we, you know, get back into your lives and we're pestering you like, did you make that resume? Did you did you make that update on your LinkedIn that we told you to make? So Monday we will resume the career support process, but we like I said, we always do this on a Friday night because we want you guys to to celebrate, to enjoy, to enjoy with your family and and to really feel proud about what you guys did. So thank you all for your awesome presentations. We had four great projects tonight. There's, you know, yeah, there's nothing negative to say about these projects. They were all awesome. Oh, I see I'm, I'm on this camera. I thought I was on this camera. I'm on two cameras. <laughs> all right. So I wish everybody a great night. Um, Go enjoy, go enjoy your Friday night, your Saturday night, your Cinco de Mayo. And then on Monday, we follow up with you guys with your career support process. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys all. <laughs> yeah. Good job, everybody. If anybody wants.